Hi and welcome to Safe in the Real World. I'm Ahmed Said. Today we are going to be talking about the five key measurements for scaled agile success. This is the first in a series of videos about how we go about measuring success in a scaled agile environment. Be this an agile release train, a, a single agile release train, or a number of agile release trains. These principles remain the same. So in this video, I want to talk to you about the challenges of metrics and the five key areas that if you can implement them well, then the chances of you being successful are, are massively improved. Okay, now measuring anything, as you know, can be both liberating, but actually it can also be quite intimidating. Now, whether that's on a personal level or whether that's on a professional level. For example, if I'm trying to lose weight, and I feel I'm not doing so well on my diet, I may shy away from that weighing scale. It may not be such an appealing prospect for me to encounter that weighing scale and say, Wee, let me go and see how badly I've been doing. It may remind me of my inability to either stick to my regime, or if I've even stuck to my regime that I'd originally planned, make me come face to face with the prospect of having to admit that I have quote unquote, failed in my endeavor. And for most people, the prospect of coming face to face with our inadequacies can fill us with some trepidation. So this can happen whether it's at a personal level or whether a professional level. I've seen this time and time again on the projects and programs that I work on. Frequently, we don't measure the things we should be measuring because there's that, that worry that we may come face to face with things we do not want to actually face up to and encounter. But that is exactly one of the reasons why we probably should be doing it. And if you think about it, why should we be measuring that? Well, have a think about it, right? The most important thing, one of the most important things when we're looking at Agile is our ability to what? It's to inspect and then we inspect that and then we adapt. So. Let's have a look and see why do we need to measure in a little bit more detail. So the first thing, as I said, is are we moving in the right direction? You've got this grand goal, you've got this vision. We know we need to get somewhere. We're inspired, we're motivated, but are we moving in the right direction? So having the right measurements and metrics can help us to make sure that we are doing that. Now, in addition to that, we need to work out to see well, how, how well are we moving towards that direction. So it's important for us to know that we're moving in the right direction, but are we moving at the satisfactory speed as well? Okay, of course, time is money and we need to make sure we're moving along in the right direction at the appropriate speed so that we can work out whether we need to make any changes or adjustments. And finally, when we have any blockers or impediments or hindrances that, that could impede us from achieving our goals, metrics can help to give us an early warning sign, almost a canary in the mine kind of a scenario that you've got a challenge that needs to be addressed. So very, very important. Now, it's unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. So while it's a good reasons for doing it, there are some challenges when it comes to, to metrics as well. Now, one of the first things to, to recognize the metrics is, is that it impacts behavior. Now, let me give you an example from my personal, uh, uh, from my personal life. My kids at the moment, there's 13, 11, and one is four, are basically at the moment struggling a little bit because they are eating what I consider at least to be a not optimal diet. They're eating far too many chocolates and candies and other things which I'm seriously trying to cut down on. So I've been sort of like nagging them for the last year to sort of like cut down on, on this stuff, right? And haven't had a lot of success. So what I decided to do this year now is that I said, okay, I'm just going to measure who eats what, when, and I have a three columns. So what's the date? What did you eat? And how much did you eat? As a metric to actually give an idea of where they are. Now I'll let you know how that's going in the first, in, uh, after we've done a couple of weeks, but already uh, after implementation, I'm already seeing a massive change in behavior. So metrics, whether it's on a personal uh, level or professional, can have a massive impact on the, way, uh, on the way in which we operate as well. So it's very important to bear that in mind as well. Now secondly, metrics are context dependent. So what could be a, a valid metrics in one 
for one team, for one project, for one scenario, for one time, may not necessarily be uh, an appropriate for another. And comparing one team against another using a metric can, uh, without taking into context the context, can be quite challenging as well. So it's something to bear in mind as well. Finally, metrics are difficult because they really can be subjective at times. What's important for one project, you know, uh, may not be important for another. How do you measure a good user experience? It's so subjective as well. How do you, how, how do you measure a well-designed page? It can have a strong subjective element to it. So what I want to talk about today is a f at a high level of five key things that if you look at uh, that can help you with uh, your metrics and measuring your success. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to be looking at is value. Okay, we want to be measuring how valuable, how much value we are actually creating, right, for our project and our program. And when we're transitioning from one methodology to another, uh, if we, especially if we're moving from a waterfall to an agile methodology, we need to measure the value before the transition so we can actually see the fruits and the benefits of transitioning over to another framework or, or an approach. So what are the challenges we have when we're looking with value? Well, well one of the first things, obviously, as you can guess, is, is that it is very subjective, right? What's valuable for one project is not necessarily valuable for another. Okay, and the other thing is, is we've got it's context. What is valuable in, in one uh, project or for one team may not be valuable for another team. And finally as well, it can be fluid. And what I mean by fluid is, is that it can change over time. Okay, so we may have something of real value or some uh, uh, that needs to be, um, uh, we may have something of value, forgive me, that, that needs to be, that may be really valuable for only a certain period of time, right? After that window passes, then that it may, the value may drop off. Equally, what our, what's important to a project may change over a, a longer period of time as well. So value is very important in terms of measuring that, but though it comes with some challenges in terms of how we can do that. Now, the second thing that we need to look at is delivery. How efficient and effective are we in terms of our ability to deliver, right? And, and also, key is looking at our ability to deliver and our time to market as well okay so one of the key principles is obtaining early feedback from the market so that we can actually enhance and increase the chances of our success through doing so and finally very importantly is a predictability because having delivery predictability is arguably one of the most important things as far as delivery is concerned because then the business can plan for when they're going to be getting stuff and it increases the confidence um, in, in the organization in our capability to deliver things as well. Okay, so let's move on now. I know it's a little bit, uh, a little bit quick. Um, quality. But quality is relatively, one could say, is, is that uh, it can be relatively straightforward in terms of measuring quality. Um, you can just look at simple metrics like the number of defects, types of uh, severity of defects, um, defe defects when, the, when uh, things are being released, etc. And you can also, but there also, there's also a subjective element to it. Okay, so some things, uh, quality could also be around usability and, and how visually appealing something is. So there could be a subjective element to that as well. Okay, finally, satisfaction. How do we measure satisfaction? Making sure that our customers uh, and our users are satisfied. Uh, as well as making sure that our delivery team, yes, delivery team, I also believe it's important to understand how happy and motivated and passionate are the team is are your teams in terms of actually building that as well that's a common uh, a common uh, uh, thought that many many um, teams uh, uh, leave behind okay and finally is the risk okay our profile risk profile is very important as well that we need to take into consideration okay so there we have it I hope you found that useful the five key elements that that you need to think about when we are measuring um, uh, our success in a scale agile 
program and I look forward to seeing you in the next video when we're going to go into far more detail in terms of how do we actually measure value in, in a scale agile program. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much. Bye.